just like to introduce Maureen. So Maureen, again, is quite well known to, very well known to a lot of us here who work in the disability sector and the multicultural sector. Um, she's been the manager of Amparo Advocacy since 2006. Um, and she says that through her work with Amparo, she's developed a deep respect for people from diverse, cult, uh, diverse cultural and linguistic backgrounds with disability who come to Australia as refugees and, and migrants and in particular the difficulty is experienced by people who don't speak English as their first language. So um, Maureen's going to launch Amparo's report, uh, NDIS and Coal Communities Aiming High for Equitable Access and we hope that will give a little bit of a snapshot on the current situation in um, Queensland as Amparo sees it. Thank you Maureen. Thank you, Lolita, and good afternoon, um, particularly to our special guest, uh, Kevin Cox, Anti-Discrimination Commissioner. To those of you who've travelled a long way, some of us, some of you interstate, uh, to be with us today. Thank you, um, community leaders, other participants, ladies and gentlemen. I also would like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners on the land of which we're gathered here today, and to pay my respects to elders, past and present. Before I start, on behalf of Amparo Advocacy, I would like to thank Griffith University for inviting Amparo to partner with them for their ninth NDIS Symposium. Amparo would like to acknowledge the generous support that Griffith University has provided, and to particularly to thank Professor Leslie Chenoweth and Dr Margaret Ward for their support and ongoing commitment to, the, to better outcomes for all people with disability. We would also like to express our sincere uh, um, tr and uh, our sincere appreciation for the tremendous support by the sponsors who have supported today. Without that support, this event would not have been possible. So thank you. On behalf of Empower, I'm very pleased to present to you this report: the NDIS and culturally and linguistically diverse communities aiming high for equitable access. I would like to speak just briefly with you today about some of the key issues and recommendations that are outlined in this report. I understand you've all received an email copy of the report. Any of you that would like a hard copy could contact our office. We had a few copies here, but they've already gone. Um. Much of what I was going to talk about today has already, already been said and, and perhaps better um, by some others. Um, but I'll continue with um, just a brief overview about the information and the recommendations of this report. Amparo believes that the implementation of the National Disability Insurance Scheme across Australia does have the potential to improve the lives of all people with disability, including those of people from culturally and linguistically diverse communities. From now on, I think probably uh, most of you are familiar with the term cold, so I won't refer to culturally and linguistically diverse, I will say cold. It is clear from Amparo's work and that of others that long-standing disadvantage and discrimination has contributed to decades of low levels of access and participation in specialist disability services by people from cold backgrounds. Unfortunately, systems that have been in place for many years, including national and state quality human service and disability services standards, have failed to address the systemic barriers that underlie the low participation levels. The purpose of this report is to highlight those issues of disadvantage that contribute to the low levels of participation and to inform ongoing development of social policies, strategies and practices that will support people from coal backgrounds with disabilities to have equitable access, participation and most of all equitable outcomes from the NDIS. This report and its recommendations are primarily informed by Amparo Advocacy's individual and systemic work on behalf of and with vulnerable people from cold backgrounds with disability. It's informed by the last 18 months of participant readiness work that's been undertaken to assist people from cold backgrounds, their families and communities to prepare for the introduction of the NDIS in Queensland. It's informed by joint research with QUT 
It's also been informed by projects that have been undertaken to strengthen the capacity of diverse communities to be more inclusive and to, be be and to better understand the needs and rights of people with disabilities. It's been informed by recommendations from a key stakeholder workshop with nine community organisations across Queensland who shared concerns about the participation of people from cold backgrounds with disability in the, in the NDIS, including QCOS, uh, QPAS, CRU, QDN, and, and a number of others. And lastly, the report has been informed, as the leaders already talked about, from, our, from learnings from other states uh, and information from um, New South Wales and Victoria, some of which you've heard about today through Megan. Australia's multicultural and access policy articulates a strong commitment to the Australian government programs and those delivered on behalf of government that, on behalf of government, that, are, that they should be accessible to all Australians. They should be responsive to their needs and deliver equitable outcomes for them regardless of cultural or language backgrounds. This policy provides an obligation on services to incorporate access and equity considerations into relevant policies, programs and services as a central element but not just as an add-on. Whilst Australia has human rights legislative policy frameworks that all reflect a strong commitment to the implementation of access and equity measures, as you can hear from earlier speakers, there are serious concerns that not enough is being done by governments and the NDIA to give effect to this commitment to people from cold backgrounds with disability. Over the years, many reports have attempted to bring to the attention of successive governments the multiple layers of disadvantage and discrimination that have alienated and isolated people from cold backgrounds with disability. Recent Australian research in 2015 by Chow confirms that there continues to be a sub substantial accessibility gap in accessing disability services between people from cold backgrounds and the broader community. This accessibility gap is evident when we examine the participation of people from cold backgrounds in the NDIS, as you've already heard. So I won't repeat the statistics. If we had it on the evaluation test, I think you might all get that right. I'll just look at um, Queensland, as Megan has already said. Um, it's only the first three months of, of the NDIS rolling out in Queensland, so it's understandable that the figure is um, perhaps lower than what we would expect or would like at 2.5%. However, our aim is that at full rollout across Queensland, this figure looks more like 13 to 14%. So these lower levels of participation that we talk about at a national and state level in the NDIS reflects a system that we think so far has been designed, developed with policy processes, communication and engagement strategies that so far are struggling to meet the needs of coal communities. So the report speaks to the underlying issues and causes of disparity. It talks about the need to, be, to build culturally competent, safe and responsive NDIS systems that will work to strengthen the capacity of individuals uh, with disability, their families and communities to understand their rights, to know what a good life looks like for them, that's meaning, meaningful for them, and to be able to fully participate in the NDIS. You heard earlier about some of the challenges experienced by refugees with disabilities um, that restrict access to important information and services. You've also heard about some of the issues of stigma and isolation that whilst occurring less in Australia um, than countries of origin, these experiences continue from the stories that we heard to negatively impact on individuals and their um, families and relationships uh, with communities and access to services. These stories highlighted for us the need to build an understanding within communities about the causality of disability, the knowledge of the rights of people with disability and the importance of promoting positive roles and the contributions that all people with disability can make to family and to the broader community. This report highlights the particular challenges people with disabilities and their families from refugee backgrounds experience and their need for intensive support and independent advocacy across a range of issues. 
issues that have already been discussed about pre-migration trauma, barriers to diagnosis, access to timely interventions, um, timely medical treatment, counselling, mental uh, treatment for mental health issues, access to affordable housing and so on. Our participant readiness work, helping people from cold backgrounds with disabilities, their families and communities to understand what the NDIS is and to help them to prepare for the rollout of this new scheme, suggests that mainstream communication strategies in Queensland by the NDIS and the state government have largely not reached cold communities. This work and the multicultural engagement work with cold communities in Queensland has also identified a number of factors that if addressed would support greater access to the NDIS. Lessons learnt from this work are also consistent with those from other states. And this preparatory work with coal communities in Queensland demonstrates that a community development approach with the support of trained bicultural workers and professional interpreters is an effective means to provide information and to identify those people with disabilities from coal communities who aren't connected to any services and who haven't heard about the NDIS. Recommendations in the report are largely aimed at the NDIA with priorities for targeted strategies and actions that Amparo believes need to, needs to be incorporated into a robust cold strategy. The successful implementation of this strategy, however, will require strong leadership and a dedicated, well-resourced team within the NDIA. Like our colleagues from interstate, we see a need for more intensive pre-planning, case management support in and independent advocacy for individuals with disabilities and their families to ensure they can understand the opportunities that are available to them and to effectively access, negotiate and participate in the NDIS. We see the central role of local area coordinators in identifying difficult to reach and isolated individuals with disability as crucial, with a recommendation in the report to employ and resource local area coordinators in each region to work specifically with people from coal communities. The report also stresses the requirement to improve information that is being collected by the NDIA so that meaningful and accurate data can be used to monitor participation rates, informed targeted strategies, policy development and planning by the NDIS, including workforce development strategies. We all know, and we've been talking for many years about the, the lack of data and the, the lack of information that is collected, and we're still unsure that there's adequate information being collected by the NDIA, and we think this is so important, um, and it's crucial to measure the effectiveness of any access and equity strategies that are employed by the NDIA. We need to build the capacity of mainstream and disability services, including the NDIA, to be able to respond to the needs of people from cold background with culturally competent, safe and responsive person-centred approaches. The NDIS strongly promotes social and economic participation of all people with disability. To achieve this for people from coal backgrounds, we must ensure inequities in the current system are not simply repl replicated in policy practices and in the delivery of supports under this new scheme. We know that the NDIS is committed to a listen, learn and build approach to deliver, to deliver a system that meets the needs of all stakeholders. We hope that this report will add to their understanding of what is necessary to achieve a system that will finally address long-standing disadvantage and a system that is fair and equitable for people from culturally and linguistically diverse backgrounds. The challenge now, of course, for the NDIS is to incorporate well-resourced access and equity measures into the core business of the NDIS as a matter of priority. Thank you.